The Battle of the Mijevci Plateau was a clash of the Croatian army and forces of the Republic of Serbian Krajina, fought on 21 the 23rd of June 1992 during the Croatian War of Independence. The battle represented the culmination of a series of skirmishes between the HV and the ISK forces in northern Dalmatia, after the implementation of the Vance Plan and deployment of the United Nations Protection Force began. The skirmishes occurred in the pink zones, areas under control of the ISK, but outside the UN protected areas established by the Vance Plan. Elements of two HV brigades advanced several kilometers north of Shibanik and captured the Mijevci Plateau, encompassing 108 square kilometers of territory and seven villages. After the battle, the Unprofor requested the HV to pull back to its positions prior to the 21st of June, and the request was followed by the United Nations Security Council Resolution 762 urging Croatia to withdraw from the plateau, but the HV remained in place. In the immediate aftermath, Croatian authorities claimed the offensive was not ordered by the general staff and that the advance was made in response to a series of provocations. After the battle, some bodies of the killed ISK soldiers were thrown into a cast pit, and were not retrieved until August, when the released prisoners of war informed the Unprofor of the location of the bodies. Chapter 1 – Background In 1990, Following the electoral defeat of the government of the Socialist Republic of Croatia, ethnic tensions worsened. The Yugoslav People's Army confiscated Croatia's territorial defense forces weapons to minimize resistance. On 17 August, the tensions escalated into an open revolt by Croatian Serbs, centered on the predominantly Serb-populated areas of the Dalmatian hinterland around Kanin, parts of the Lika, Cordon, Banovina regions and eastern Croatia. Following the Pakrats clash between Serb insurgents and Croatian special police in March 1991, the conflict had escalated into the Croatian War of Independence. The JNA stepped in, increasingly supporting the Croatian Serb insurgents. In early April, the leaders of the Croatian Serb revolt declared their intention to integrate the area under their control, known as Saukraina, with Serbia. In May, the Croatian government responded by forming the Croatian National Guard, but its development was hampered by a United Nations arms embargo introduced in September. On 8 October, Croatia declared independence from Yugoslavia, and a month later the ZNG was renamed the Croatian Army. Late 1991 saw the fiercest fighting of the war, as the 1991 Yugoslav campaign in Croatia culminated in the siege of Dubrovnik and the Battle of Vukova. In November, Croatia, Serbia and the JNA agreed upon the Vance Plan, contained in the Geneva Accord. The plan entailed a ceasefire, protection of civilians in specific areas designated as United Nations Protected Areas and UN Peacekeepers in Croatia. The ceasefire came into effect on 3 January 1992. In December 1991, the European Community announced its decision to grant a diplomatic recognition to Croatia on 15 January 1992. Sarkrina renamed itself the Republic of Serbian Krajina on 19 December 1991. Despite the Geneva Accord requiring an immediate withdrawal of JNA personnel and equipment from Croatia, the JNA stayed behind for up to eight months in some areas. When its troops eventually pulled out, JNA left their equipment to the ISK. As a consequence of organizational problems and breaches of ceasefire, the UN peacekeepers, named the United Nations Protection Force, did not start to deploy until 8 March. The UNPROFOR took two months to fully assemble in the UN protected areas. Furthermore, the ISK forces remained in areas outside designated UNPAs which were under ISK control at the time of the signing of the Implementation Agreement ceasefire of 3 January 1992. Those areas, later better known as the Pink Zones, were supposed to be restored to Croatian control from the outset of the plan implementation. Failure of this aspect of the implementation of the Vance Plan made the Pink Zones a major source of contention for Croatia and the ISK. Chapter 2 – Prelude Before the Unprofor fully deployed, the HV clashed with an armed force of the ISK in the village of Nozkalik, located in a Pink Zone near Shibanik, 
and captured the village at 4.45 p.m. on 2 March 1992. The JNA formed a battle group to counterattack the next day. The JNA battle group, augmented by elements of the 9th Military Police Battalion, deployed at 5.50 a.m. and clashed with the HV force in Nose Kalik. However, the JNA counterattack failed. The HV captured 21 ISK troops in Nose Kalik, intent on exchanging the prisoners for Croats held under arrest in Kanin. Following negotiations, the HV agreed to pull back on the 11th of April, but later declined to do so, claiming deteriorating security at the battlefield in general prevented the withdrawal. Several Serb-owned houses in Nose Kalik were torched after the HV captured the village. The HV clashed with units subordinated to the 180th Motorized Brigade of the JNA in a pink zone near Zadar on 17 to 22 May. While the JNA repelled attacks in most areas around Zadar and Stankovsi, the HV managed to cut a JNA base at the Chris Hill away from the rest of the force on the 17th of May. The JNA outpost occupied high ground overlooking the surrounding area, including Zada. It housed radar equipment, and was used as an artillery observer post. The JNA attempted to relieve the besieged garrison in the next few days, however the attempts failed and the base surrendered to the HV on the 22nd of May. The attack and capture of the Chris Hill, codenamed Operation Jaguar, was carried out by the 2nd Battalion of the 159th Infantry Brigade of the HV, supported by artillery of the 112th Infantry Brigade. Chapter 3, Timeline On 21 June, the HV attacked ISK positions at the Miesi Plateau, located in the pink zone north of Shibanik. The two forces in the area were subordinated to the 1st Brigade of the 2, and Lt. Col. Gen. Milan Torbitzer. The HV deployed 250 troops, elements of the 113th and 142nd Infantry Brigades, commanded by Brigadier Kruno Mazalin. The HV had infiltrated the Pink Zone along three routes, via Nose Kalik, across the Sikola River and by boat sailing upstream along the Kruka River, during the night of 20-21 of June. The fighting began at 5 a.m., as the HV force, deployed in 26 squads, captured six out of seven villages on the plateau by the end of the morning. At 8 p.m., the HV captured the village of Kluk, and all of the plateau. The advance created a HV held salient south of Kanin, several kilometers deep. It also led the ISK artillery to bombard Shibanik and HV bombardment of Kanin in response. Both on the 22nd of June. The artillery fire progressively intensified until 23 June, while the ISK mobilized and counterattacked against the HE positions at the Miefsi Plateau. However, the mobilization yielded only 227 additional troops, and the counterattack failed. An unprofor assessment concluded the situation might deteriorate further and engulf all of the pink zones. To address the situation, Unperformed military commander Lieutenant General Satish Nambiar met with Deputy Prime Minister of Croatia Milan Ramliak and Chief of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Croatia General Anton Tuz in Zagreb the same day, in order to discuss the developments on the Mijevsi Plateau. Skirmishes continued on 24 June, accompanied by some artillery fire. Morale of the ISK troops plummeted though, causing A to garrison based in nearby Trebanje to abandon its barracks. Chapter 4, Aftermath According to Croatian sources, the HV lost seven or eight troops killed in the battle. Serb sources cite 40 killed Arske troops, in the battle or its immediate aftermath, while the HV took 17 prisoners. The prisoners were taken to the Kolini barracks in Šibenik. On 23 June, a total of 29 ISK soldiers killed at the Mijevsi Plateau on the first day of the battle were thrown into the Basika pit, contrary to orders given by Brigadier Ivan Barcic, commanding officer of the 113th Infantry Brigade. Barcic ordered burial of the killed ISK troops at a local Serbian Orthodox cemetery. The bodies of the dead soldiers were later exhumed from a cast pit through the mediation of UN peacekeepers. The same day, one prisoner, Miroslav Subotic, 
was shot in nose colleague by HV personnel. He was one of a group of prisoners tasked with clearance of the area after the fighting. According to Croatian sources, the HV also destroyed 10 tanks and armored personnel carriers, and captured six howitzers and a considerable stockpile of other weapons and ammunition in the battle. The offensive brought seven villages and 108 square kilometers to HV control dock during their meeting with Nambiar, Ramliak and Tuz claimed that the offensive was neither planned nor ordered by authorities in Zagreb. They stated that the advance was made in response to a series of provocations made by the ISK armed forces. Bacic claims that while no specific order to attack was received, Tuz did instruct him to respond aggressively and capture as much territory as possible in cases of grave breaches of ceasefire by the ISK forces. Nevertheless, Bacic was reprimanded by the president of Croatia Franjo Tudman because of the offensive. In the ISK, Torbica was forced to resign his post and was replaced by Major General Mil Novakovic. Unprofor and the European Community Monitor Mission requested the HV to withdraw to positions held before the offensive, but the HV declined the request. However, Croatia agreed that Unprofor and ECMM monitors would continue to be present in the pink zones when Croatia assumed control over them. The move was planned as a way to reassure the Serb population that the pink zones could provide them safety. In the aftermath of the offensive, the United Nations Security Council adopted the UNSC Resolution 762, urging cessation of hostilities in or near the UNPAs, and urging the HV to pull back to positions held before 21 June. The 113th Brigade of the HV remained at the plateau regardless. The resolution authorized the UNPROFOR to perform monitoring of the pink zones. It also recommended establishment of a joint commission chaired by an UNPROFOR representative, and including representatives of the government of Croatia, local authorities and the ECMM to oversee restoration of Croatian control in the pink zones. The prisoners taken by the HV were released in August, and they informed the UNPROFOR about the bodies in the Basika pit, and the death of Subotic. The bodies were retrieved by Croatian authorities in the presence of UNPROFOR and other international organizations. Two Croatian military police members were charged with Subotic's murder in 2011. As of 2013 the trial is ongoing. In 2012, 20 years after the battle, President Ivo Josipovic presented the Charter of the Republic of Croatia to the commanders and units involved in the battle, commending their military achievements. That was the first such move in 20 years, and a reversal of the official stance towards the offensive which had originally declared it as an unauthorized deployment of the HV.